Okay. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is the November 30th meeting of the Board of Sewer Commissioners. I'd like to call the meeting to order. We have a roll call. Donna Bronk. Malcolm White. Peter Dunlop. And Jim Giberti. And we'll go to the approval of the minutes from the November 9th meeting. I make a motion that we accept the minutes as written. I'll second that. Okay, all in favor? Aye. All right. 300. One abstain. Citizens participation. We have no one in attendance. And sewer business. <clears throat> what do we have pending in here? Guy, have you heard anything from uh, Ty and Bond? No, I have not. Nor have I reached out to them, so uh, I can reach out to them. Yeah, we need to get them moving. I, you know, they seem like they're falling asleep with the switch. Uh, we can't move forward until we get input from them. Yeah. Have the superintendent's report. Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman, members of the, of the board, very brief. Um, we just have come out of our permit season. The end of October, we finally did our final tests, which we do the month after, which be November. And I'm uh, happy to say that our seven-month seven average in nitrogen was 2.2. Uh, four is our limit in 2.2. Um, and we usually average around 2, 2.2, 2.5, um, which is... For us, it's nice because the next set of permits we get from the EPA is going to be three milligrams per liter of nitrogen. So uh, it's good to be able to meet the below three now in anticipation of that uh, more stringent uh, permit. Mm -hmm. So we're pretty excited about that. So um, I also want to talk about we have two new hires, two new laborers we got on board, and we have one more operator we got a month ago. So it's really helped out. We're able to, to start isolating or to form teams. And one of the tasks has been to uh, tackle that half a million dollar list. I've got an operator in labor, and that's their only task, uh, five, five days a week. They get there in the morning, and we're picking them off one at a time. We've hired an electrician. We have an electrician that's doing the stuff that we can't do. That's the replacement of the fixtures and things of like that that become an electrical code to make sure we meet the code as far as explosive improvements and all those, all those fine things. So we're pretty happy that that's in, in, in progress. Um, that's about all I have for the top of my head. I, I think the modification and other things we can talk about as we get into them, but as far as my specific report, that's all I have. Okay. Anybody? Questions, comments? Okay. Okay, Marta, we'll go to the unfinished business, uh, the modification of comprehensive wet wastewater management plan. Um, I don't know how much the board knows it's in your package your original book is what the comprehensive wastewater management plan was uh, when they did the upgrade to 20 uh, 205 i think they actually started in 1999 they identified 12 areas within the community that they needed to sewer and that was in conjunction with the upgrade the areas um, were identified due to the um, the waterways if you will uh, the agawam river waterway <coughs> and the Weweantic River, as those rivers were identified as impaired by the EPA and the DEP. So we've, uh, we, we did the 12, actually we did the 10, we came to the last contract three, which was the controversy one because of costs. It was gonna be greater than $30,000 betterment per home. And that was the Agawam area, which is off of um, Onset and then the Mayflower Ridge area, which is right behind the uh, Tremont Nail Factory, right across the way from there is where that neighborhood was. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So the Board of Selectmen at that time, sewer commissioners, decided to cancel that part of the contract. So we went to DEP, we met the chairman at the time, was Mr. Slavin, myself, uh, Joe the engineer, 
it represents an EPA, DEP, and we talked about modifying our comprehensive wastewater management plan, and they said, go right ahead. And they identified some areas for us that they would like us to look into. And one of them was the um, trailer park, the trailer park here on Route uh, 28, Garden Homes North. And then that area along the, the, the river, which is the, I believe, I keep forgetting, it's Gateway Shores area. Then across the street, you have the Division Ave the development. Then you got the Sandusky um, condos, and it just goes on and on and on. So at that time, we had gotten a, 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 we got a, a proposal from some engineers, and one of them was Bader, to do that project. And it just went on hold, and it's been on hold ever since. So all I'm suggesting to the board is that we look into modifying, and now they call it notice of project change, and I'll give you a copy of what we got from Bader, and they talked to the DEP. Um, the DEP, they talked to um, Jonathan Holt, and they talked to uh, Jeff. And that's just an idea, some oversight. We have no, uh, we put no cost to it, and nothing it's just an oversight. And so what I would suggest or require, request of the board is that if they think it's something we should move forward, um, to continue that process, we, we'd like to. And all this ties into capacity of the facility, because remember we did the 12, if you read the original documentations, we were told in that documentation to CDM that if we sewered what we said, the 12 need areas, that we would be out of capacity. And that was their projection of the gallons they, that they actually did. Um, so um, now we're saying it's time to modify that. We actually we should have done it in 2014, but it's something that we need to pick up and start to discuss and find out where the boards, what the direction we want to go in. And this does tie into the outfall, because to do the outfall, if you notice, we looked at that done, we thought it needed analysis, and this is part of that. If if we were to go, Mr. Chairman, I'm sorry, through you. Um, if we were to go ahead and, and, and do a uh, suggest that we do the Garden Homes North, and w what's the other area, the Gateway Shores their area? Gateway Shores area, anything around the Agawam River. We don't have the capacity, do we? No, it's, it's, uh, you're, you're right, to do all that we certainly don't have the capacity. What we're doing is identifying areas that we would like to do as capacity becomes available. Oh, so okay. let's say we do an expansion of the plan, we move the outfall, all of a sudden we have a half million gallons per day of capacity. Excuse me, what does it go? Excuse me one second, Guy. Could you clarify when you say when, it, when capacity becomes available, are you talking about now uh, reducing I&I &I to increase the capacity, or are you talking about primarily the outflow? All of the above. No, well, let's, let's so, segregate it. Well, it's all of the above. So capacity, so if you have... If you, let's say you have 300,000 gallons per day of I&I, and, I, and over the years you're trying to get rid of it. Well, to verify I&I, I, you need three years of data. So if you take out a gallon, it's three years later before that gallon, a portion of that gallon becomes available. And so it's a long-term process. So what happens if when those gallons become available, the question becomes is where are they gonna go? You're just gonna throw them into the pot and say, first come, first grab, or are you gonna have an orderly way of saying, this is No, you're area. obviously going to allocate this stuff in advance, uh, but what that's I want to do is to clarify about. so everybody understands what we're talking about. I mean, right now, the outflow, you know, is something we would like to see and like it completed, et cetera. So far, it hasn't happened. No. What has happened is we have reduced I&I &I through the lining of pipes where we found breaks and all. Absolutely. We have so by reducing that I&I, &I, we've increased capacity that way, so. Well, just, uh, I just I want to be clear, you're right. I just want to be clear that when we, when we remove I&I &I today, that I&I &I doesn't become available for three years. As so far as allocation is concerned, but you know it's. It's our verifying because the DEP but you know, verification. But you know that you've got it and down it the road coming to you. So if you're taking out so 100,000 gallons you're planning a year. It, you're, you're kind of planning for it anyhow. 
But if you, if you take 100,000 gallons a year, the real world is saying that you're not going to get 100%. No. So you, that's why you wait three years and you figure out what that number is. So let's say you take 100,000 a year for the next three years. It's 750. In theory, you have 300,000. So in the third year, you say, okay, well, I've got this much available in each year going on. So let's say for the first year, 50,000 came available. The question becomes is where are you going to put that 50,000 gallons? You're banking it pretty much. And then you say, okay, but I, in my list of expansion, this area needs to be done or whatever. So this is where that's allocated. So I said we're going to allocate this stuff. And that's place. what the whole idea, the concept yeah. of the wastewater management plan so is where's the gallons going to go? So once we've fixed and corrected areas and we've gained more, we've got to wait the three years to make sure that it, we're going to have that, right? Yes, it's, it's verification. Verification. Because to, to be blunt about it, there's, there's some issues. So an example, we, we fixed every pipe in Swiss Beach, every pipe. Mm -hmm. And we said we got 200,000. And we now gave it a, 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 a sump pumps. So all we're doing is tightening our pipes up and we're sending it to their basements. So in theory, we're going to get a percent of that, whether it's 100%, 80%, 20%, because we're just moving the water and then bring it back in through the illegal connections of sump pumps. So we wait three years and say that number, we took 100,000, we believe, but the real number was 40,000 or 30,000 because we right. got this to do. So right. that's why it's not gallon for gallon that you remove. It's, it could be substantially less. So in the third year, you say, okay, here's the number. Here's what's happened. Okay, yeah, we've got 30,000. So you put that on the books and you just continue on that way. How many gallons would it take for Garden Homes North? Because I've heard that that's a real problem. It, it's a major problem. The DEP, it's on their hot list. It's yes. got 10,000 gallons per day, which, which it puts it in the DEP's hands. And the numbers, um, the numbers vary, but I'll, I'll tell you what I had. Um, I think at one point in time, it was like 20, 22 or 23,000 gallons per day. Ballpark. And that's based on Title V. What the actual is, I don't know, but everything's based mm -hmm. on Title V. And you take the homes, is that the homes are there, and they each one should have a system, that type of thing, and you calculate the numbers. When you say it's based on t Title V, what's the translation? Does that mean? In it's t Title V, uh, uh, CMR 310. Is that, is, is, that a, is that a high number to look at or a no, that's, that's, medium? That's or the Department of Environmental Protection's number to look at. They say when you design... Okay, so they're saying you've so you, you got 23,000, did you say? They did, yes, so 23,000 gallons per day. So if you're looking at the, you, you budget in 30 for planning purposes, you can go from there. So if you, right? let's, if you budget 30 and they use 23, because that's what the calculations are. Then you've got some... Then you've got some surplus. You've got some we all know that when you... Because it's all based upon capital flow, but gosh, if I say to to um, Commissioner uh, um, um, Peter, I say, okay, you use 100 gallons a day. He says, oh no, no, I don't. I I, I use 50 gallons a day. I spend 60 percent of my time away from my home. So, but I'm going to give him 125 gallons per day is what I'm going to allocate to him. That may not be real in his personal life, but per capita. That's where he belongs. And so that's where those numbers come from. That's so okay. he okay. says, you will do this, and that's just how it's calculated. No, it's not necessarily right. Do we have enough, enough at what? this present time to, to address the Garden Homes North? No. No, okay. I don't believe so. I've got a document here I, uh, um, uh, that may talk to that. Um, it, there's a lot going on swirling around us and capacity right now is a, is a hot button is a, is a very and I, I've been you know the, the sky's falling for the last four years but we quickly are approaching capacity and we have been and we're very close to capacity. But it would seem to me that that's if we have any capacity to use that's the primary uh, priority area that needs to be taken care of. What, what is the priority priority? Garden, Garden homes. homes. Yes, that's along the that's along the uh, Agawam River. So anything else that comes down the street is goes on back burner until well, what about these gets new addressed. Projects? Well, let me be, let me be, the, 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 the passing these new projects. You know, the projects that are in the books. So remember, Garden Homes has never come to this board and requested capacity. Um, nobody else. So let's say there's development developers out there, and they're all over. They're gonna. They haven't come to this board for capacity if, at that time. If that's a hot them. button with DEP, it doesn't seem no, to me it's like a it's a hot button with us, not DEP. Capacity. Cost capacity is a is is. Garden Homes. You said it was with DEP. You just said it was a hot button with DEP. Garden Homes Trailer Park. Yes, it's a hot button with DEP. Absolutely. Okay. Now they haven't come to us. I don't think that makes any difference. If that's a hot button with them, that's a hot button with us. Okay, there's two separate and I okay, there's two separate issues. As far as our comprehensive plan, it could be in other words, we say what do we want to sue? It's long the and we know that DEP would like to do that, so we put it on our list of priorities. 
That's the comprehensive wastewater management plan that we're talking about now if we want to dock one and move forward. Put that aside. So now XYZ developer comes to the town of Wareham and they say, I want to put this development in. What do you have for capacity? Let's go to the book. Oh, we got 40,000 gallons per day. Great, put me down for 30. Okay, they come to the board, request 30, and you say yes or no. No, because we're thinking that we may do this conference waste model management plan. We're thinking, but, but what's reality today? So all I'm saying is that capacity, we've got a lot of things in the works, and so capacity becomes an issue. Separate from what you're talking about, what the hot buttons are. Two separate issues. Well, I, I, I don't find that, that two I, separate I, issues. I don't, I don't see where it's two separate issues. I think we're, we're dragging the heels, obviously, on a, on a, a hot button issue that should have been addressed I, I know previously. I, I don't know who's been dragging so, heels. It's well, been I don't work. We haven't been because we didn't know about it. Well, now I, we know it's a hot button. I think that's something we should move forward with, you know, aggressively. I, I wasn't privy to the meeting between the old board and the new board. I'm not privy neither to will, meetings. Neither were we. And so I don't know what's been transposed, uh, what's been transferred to the new board. I have no idea. Neither do we. Um, and so there's a list out there of all the things that we need to talk about. And so I, I don't know. I don't know what to do with them. I, I really, it's not my, uh, uh, not my I call. Mean, if so gar they if come Garden up. Homes is a DEP hot button issue, then I think it should be our hot button issue also. And for 20 years. Mr. Mr. Chairman. Yes, go. How close are we to capacity in gallons? I, I, it, in my calculations, Raleigh from the 2011, we're probably about 14,000 gallons per day away. 14,000? Yes, and that's pure flow based on the 2011 analysis. That's how close we are to capacity. We can handle 14,000 more. Yes. Okay. That's, in, that's, that's pure math. Now, flow. If, if this development that they talk about, um, this 40B project they talk about it, was it Redbrook? 240 units. <coughs> How much will that cost <coughs> in gallons? Well, it depends. Uh, they're projecting for roughly, uh, let's see, I've seen the paperwork back in March. I've seen it recently. Yeah, you yeah, uh, see now it's changed. It's gone. about, it's, so they have 1,100 gallons now because they own a connection. They already have a connection. So they would probably have to expand that connection by 28,000 gallons per day. Now, is that based on the 240 units? Yes. Because they originally only asked for 180. I'm not sure of the numbers. Uh, someone said, I know in the paper, the uh, chairman of the board said they asked for more or less, and then they asked for more. But I have to, I can look at my original documentation, because originally they had one bedroom, two bedroom, and three bedrooms. And I don't know what that number is. I can look to be sure. So if this for is forced down our throat, all of this talk is a waste of time. Well, uh, <laughs> Nobody can make you put two gallons in a gallon. Nobody. Uh, yes, but if, if they can, if, if this project can come in and we don't have any way to stop it. Well, we, we don't. Whether they use sewer or septic system, if we don't have capacity, they can put a septic system. Exactly. So if, if they want to get in, they get in. We can't stop it. Yeah. If by, by sewer, because they say, okay, right, we'll put a septic system. They're done. They're done. We don't, in other words, we don't have to give it to them. They can put, put, put a septic system in. If we don't have the capacity for them, they can put a septic. If we have capacity, they come to us. So no matter what, if somebody wants to build a development and there's options, they just have to weigh out their options. Heck, they can put through a little mini treatment plant. <coughs> there's many, many options. And that's what they'll have to weigh out as developers. I don't get in their business. I just get into when they present it to me after they've made their decisions is what we deal with. Hypothetically, they can do anything. Now, do you have a breakdown on these? I, yeah areas you've identified by gallon? Yes, I do. And what do they total? The areas we talked about. Garden homes, that, is that what you're asking? Garden homes, division yeah. streets, stone condominiums, gateway shores, Sandusky Drive. Division street area, <laughs> Ontario street area, Mayflower Ridge, Charge Pond Road. Can I give it to you? You're reading it, you must have it. Oh, it's, oh, it's listed here? I'm sorry. Yeah, so you must have it. Yeah, it's, it's, it's everybody should have it. It's there. That's what's listed, right? You have the list. No? Am I wrong? I've got a list here. I don't see the... I don't see any gallons. I see the list. It's not there? All right. Well, let's look at gallons. Where are you seeing the list? That's on the second page. 
the for back of the first page. Oh, uh, actually, here? I was reading it off the map, but it's oh. on the second page. Yeah. Okay. And you get a list of the properties. Oh, okay, I've got it, yeah. Yeah, yeah uh, back. I got you right here. <clears throat> Thank you. So the new area proposes roughly 153,000 gallons per day. So you see the point one five three. Mm -hmm. Yes. 153 gallons. 153,000 gallons per day. It's projected for the proposed new needs, uh, needs area. And those are projected upon census. And so part of their, the exercise would be to physically Sensors aren't as sometimes as accurate as we would like them to be. But the garden homes north would be 24,000 gallons? Yes. I think I said 23, but it's yep. 24. No, got, uh, yeah, no, that, that, that's right, 24. Great Hill is 23. Remember Great Hill? We're in the middle of it now, so technically those gallons are accounted for. Mm -hmm. Because it's um, the proposal of Great Hill because they're sewered. So mm -hmm. we're expanding upon their sewer. The board's already approved them to expand those gallons, which they're in the middle of. They've actually just started. So this is Ooh. all dr draft stuff or stuff we're working on. We have another meeting tomorrow to start refining this stuff. So this information. Um, Who's that meeting with, Guy? I'm sorry? Who's the meeting with? Beta. Oh, with Beta. Because, you see, the, the hard part about all this is there's no exact science. There's scientific approaches, and that's what we're <coughs> realizing. Um, so we want to be as accurate as we can be, so we're constantly digesting numbers. One of the biggest numbers is, is effluent flow. Uh, and so if it goes out to the river, then that's effluent. And then you have dry seasons, because you've got planned I and I, so if it's dry, you don't get those gallons. So when you go to the, meter, the annual metering, you say, wow, I had a great year. You really have to go back to the worst case, which was the ninth, I think it was the 2015 year was the highest on record of water, and take your flow at that point in time and say, okay, that's the worst case scenario, and I've got to, I've got to design off of that. And then there's, there's the, the, the concept of peak. So you have all these houses, and conceptually, no one, or no, uh, not everyone is going to turn their pumps, their, their flush their toilets at the very same time. But you've got to design for it in the event it does happen. Can you handle it? And so those are peaks. So we have to work through all those things and make sure that our flow numbers are accurate. But these, this is the first pass. I share it with the boards, and we're going to really modify this and correct it as we go to start zeroing on the numbers that we've got in front of us. Estimate we're going to save on I and I. If we can, if we can wipe it out. Guy, sorry. What did we estimate? <clears throat> what was the best estimate that they gave us on what we can set, save on R and R? I and I. R and I. Save as far as gallons. How much we can recapture. For capacity, we estimated at one time up to 300,000 gallons per day. How much? 300,000 gallons per day of I and I. We know that for every inch of rain we get, we see 100,000 gallons immediately. And then there's residual because water comes into the ground. It doesn't all go right to the pipes. It makes its way to the pipes. So the very first day, 
we know for a fact that's 100,000 gallons per day. So the calculations based upon other numbers is approximately 300,000 gallons per day INI. Again, you have to be careful because wet season, the 300,000, on a dry season, it may be 170,000 gallons because there's no water. So it's the variable. So again, you got to go to your worst case and base everything on your worst case. If I was to go a very dry season and do it and say, hey, we got no I and I, and then we base it upon that, and then we get a wet season, all of a sudden I got backups everywhere and stuff flowing into the ocean, people get very upset. So you go worst case. So 300,000 would be our worst case, yes. The, the report we're doing for the state, the I and I report that we, we uh, town meeting, that should be completed the end of January. So December 31st was our date, but everybody was fighting for the same meters throughout the state, so we all had to take turns, and so we got a month extension to complete that. We're about 90% complete. And that'll give us a very good answer to your question, more specific than the estimates we made of the 300,000. Do we have a, a ballpark idea of what we may have saved with the pipes that we've lined thus far? No, we, we ballparked 160,000 gallons per day, and those are major breaks. Yeah, I know. Um, so we, that's our estimate. What we actually grab, I, I couldn't tell you. I'll know in a couple of years what we actually grabbed. Because what we did is we took the hole that we in the pipe and we calculated, and the, 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 the it's a very simple thing. You say, okay, how much fills a, you know, how many, how many seconds does it take to fill up a, a five gallon, one gallon container, and then you extrapolate the numbers. How much so, wood does the wood chuck chuck? Because you're inside of a pipe and you're looking at it, there's no way to get in there. You can't put a cup in there and no. measure it, so you got to kind of. It's like when you assess an I and uh, an overflow, an SSO. So the EPA says, okay, that, that manhole's leaking into the river. How many gallons? And you look and say, okay. And you got to ask yourself, if I were to put that in a five gallon container, how long would it take to fill it? Then you take the numbers and go from there. So that, that that's the. But again, I. To back to complete circle, the modified carpets wastewater management plan. Is that something the board thinks we should pursue? Yes, I do. Any, anybody else? Hello. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah, I it think, doesn't, I think it we doesn't need to commit us anything I other think, than the fact that we have a plan in place. Yeah, I think we need it. Right. Available. It's Re all committed. Review what's in place and see what it does say to yeah. us and which way we need to go from here. Now well, let's bring that back up again in a, I mean, it's not easy. about a month or so. You, you guys get your hands full. The yeah. board has their hands full. It's, it's a tough project, you guys. I mean, it's not easy, the decision we made, but we'll do our very best to provide the information so you can make the best decision you can possibly make, but it's, it's, it's a step in the right direction. And Beta has been the one that's been working on this. Yes, they've been since, okay, since 2014. Okay. <clears throat> okay, that's we'll bring this back up on a future agenda. Do we have a main out in that area? Excuse me? Do we have a main out in that area? Do we have a main on that road on twenty eight? For what? Cove? In, in, in that in that area they've identified. Do we have a main in that area? There's nothing on that side of the river. Nothing at that all. That's why the DEP, DEP thinks that because it's right, the river's here and our systems are crossing from the river, we'd have to get there or we can go to Main Street coming through Elm Street. But yes, that's, there's no main, there's no pipes, no sewer on that side. But we're practically coming down to across the street from Toby Road. I mean, if you're picking up Santos Drive. Santos Drive is up by the um, yeah, Sutton right. Ford or Wareham Ford. Yeah. Which is along the, the uh, Agawam River. So everything in there should be close to the Agawam River. Top Sandwich Road. Huh? Santos? No, no, 28. 28. That's on 28, not, sa not Sandwich Road. Isn't Santos right here? From 28 to Sandwich Road. Yes, it's right here. It's, it's up, oh, uh, what's I mean, on the Sandwich Road end? It's across the street from Toby. Well, Toby? No, I'm thinking across an Atlantic boat. That's where it comes out on one end. What's on the other end? Uh, there's a, a eye place and treatment plants where they direct yeah. Lynn Ave. Lynn Wood Ave. Oh, Sandwich Road. Yeah. Yes, but Toby, what's, Toby's confusing me. Toby's throwing me for a loop. You said right across from Toby. Well, is that pretty close to the plant? No. No. Toby Road? No. Toby's 
Does Toby Road Where well, Santos Road comes out to Sandwich. Sandwich. Toby, uh, Sand Santos. Forget Toby. Yeah. Okay, good. We're done. Then we're, if I forget Toby, it's easy. By the plant. Santos is San 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 by the plant. Yeah. So let's forget okay. Toby. Toby's not part of the picture. Tony's Lane. Tony's Lane, yes. Tony. That's, yes. Tony's. Okay. No, well, yes, I can agree with that. Yeah. It's so spelled practically across the street. That's spelled Toby. a little different. Yeah. Tony's Toby. Lane is a little, yes. Now, like, Only uh, one letter. Come on. I'm sorry. I got three out of four right <laughs> <laughs> A tease, a tease, a tease. Oh. I get it. But, but we, we couldn't come right straight there and bingo across the street? And so that's the way for that one particular, but when you sewer, you look at the cost of sewering and how much can you grab. So you, the more bodies, the cheaper the cost. So right. You, you factor all that. But out. I mean, if you just started out the other end to Charge Pond Road and came down that way. We're looking at all that. Yes, the route, whatever route we take would be the best. We, we'll figure that out because the infrastructure coming into Tony's Lane uh, would be through Linwood. We have no infrastructure on Route 6. So we'd have to either make infrastructure or tie into the existing infrastructure, which would be Linwood Ave. And that goes into that <coughs> pump station. And the flow would be also we upgrade that and all that. So yeah, all that's looked at. The best route, the best direction, that's part of the analysis of, the, of what your needs are. How do you get it there? And, and yeah, absolutely, it's all part of it. They'll go to Church Town Road. Mr. Chairman, my, my, my question is basically that we know we have a, a major problem with the garden homes north, and, and it's a real serious problem. If we don't have the capacity, I mean, you can't make the capacity, I, I understand that, but is there some other thing that we can do, or, or, or there's, there's got to be something better that we can do there. That's a tough question because you're dealing with private ownership. Yeah. And the owner can tell the DEP go pound tar, then it's fined in the whole nine yards. Uh, the DEP set precedent about five years ago. Uh, there was a trailer park in Pocasset, Mass, that mm -hmm. the owner told the DEP to, to go pound tar, and they ended up taking him to court. But that was a long, and, and the DEP won, that was a long year, in, I think six, seven years to get to that determination. So um, it's hard to tell a private concern what to do. Um, we've asked, the DEP's asked him to do something. That and he hasn't done anything. No, and, and, they've and, asked him. And he, he is polluting the Agawam Well, because it's going, he's it's causing, it's, it's, absolutely, he's causing it's going, major problems over there. I've had conversation with him about doing a, a, a low pressure system, you know, the grinder pump, because it's just, he can put a main pump station right. and use a two inch line or less and shoot it directly through, as, as, as suggested, um, the, the, through Toby and into us, individually, just his own. And no, and so that's that's a private. Mr. However, Chairman, a sewer becomes available, yeah. the game changes. Mr. Chairman, I suggest that you know we, we look into something to make these people do something because it's it's just appalling the condition in that area, <coughs> and we've known it and we've known it and we've you know and and, and I'm, I'm not. That's a health department issue, isn't it? Well. No, it's out of their hands. It's, it it's in the hands of the, because of the flow, it's 10,000 gallons, greater than 10,000 gallons per day. It becomes under the DEP. They really need a groundwater discharge permit. So they find, so that means a mini plant, the whole nine yards. And why the DEP suggested to us, if they became on a needs analysis, what that means is we're gonna sewer that area. So if there was a sewer pipe in front of that park, then they have no option but to tie in. They're compelled. Right now, there's no option. And so that's why we're thinking, we need, where, where are we going to go next? And so we suggested that area. That would be the next place we go and commit our gallons to that area. Thank you. My, my question. Go, go uh, that way and then continue out. Yes. My, my question on that. Out. Okay. You're doing uh, Great Hill. What is the annual charge to Great Hill? Is that one EDU? One EDU per trailer. Okay, so that would be it. And what about uh, the original hookup fee? That was already done when they hooked, because I remember Great Hill is already tied into our system, and okay. I don't know what that is. That okay. was old. So what, what would it, expanding. what would it be if you did, if doing garden homes? So I, let me see if I understand. So you're saying, would there be a development fee to yeah. connect? And my thought would be there'd be one main line and you'd pay for that development fee. 
and then everything behind that, because he's got this one line, we wouldn't put many lines into him, but one, that's the fee. And then from that point, we would charge EDUs. Per, and then, per and, unit. Yes, per unit. And then there's a $200 per unit to get a permit to tie that in, so it would be 200 per times. And then it would be the, the um, 18000 presently for the connection. And then there would be the, the, the uh, I'm sorry, the, the, the uh, plan evaluation. So that, that's what, right presently, that's what our fees would be. Basically, it would be eighteen thousand for the development fee. As far as I know, but that's something the board can. Yeah. Again, the board can look at that and say, "Wait a minute, we think there's three ties there." I, the board can look at that, but the policy says for every for each connection we give you, it's eighteen thousand dollars for that connection. Now, the board can say, "But that connection only does so much. You can't do the half a town with it." You know, so that may be something the board has to look at. I don't know of any policy. I'll review them again that speaks to how much can go behind that line. Actually, when we do betterments, it's, you know, a bettered property. So you have a home on your property. You go to the planning board and say, I want to put three condos in that property. If you still have that one connection, you don't charge more connections because you have this existing connection. So the board has to look at that. They could, I mean, you can change whatever you felt was fair. There's, there's many opinions and, and approaches to that. That's going to be interesting. Mm -hmm. I guess we'll have to look that one in a lot more depth. Yeah, I, mean, I think when it comes from the board, that you'd really look, because you'd look at, now you have plans in front of you and what's going on. Yeah. Then you could really look at it and say, okay, what are we doing here? What, what's the real number? And at that time, before you issue anybody's permission to tie in, there's conditions that you can set based upon policy or a new policy or whatever. You can make a decision going forward because it's hard to say, I'm going to make a policy that will go to something hypothetical. Sometimes when it's put in front of you, it's a little easier for the board to maybe, make policies. Maybe we, maybe we should be very cautious on what we let go from now on until we get this study finished. It yes. could be. You could say that... Just put a stop. You could say there's a moratorium on connection until we really know we have capacity because we may have priorities coming along the line. What the policy now is, is kind of like the grocery deli. First come, first serve. We've got this many gallons. And we, in, in 2011, when we did the first report, we had 156,000 gallons per day. That's what was given to us by the Woodward and Curran report. Mm -hmm. So that's it. So now it's like, okay, you come. We just keep picking like you do the deli. And so we've been doing that over the years. Yeah. And now we're almost depleted. But can we, uh, could you s submit something to the board, uh, a proposed policy relative to what Donna was just saying? A moratorium. Yeah, it would be a moratorium or, or a different basis or whatever you think would be the most apropos I think it's the smartest thing direction we can do right now. So what I'll do is cover all of us. I will bring that up in my meeting tomorrow and see what's been done on the communities. Yeah. And then we'll look yeah, at what's, see. what's the precedent guide? Like, say we handle a million gallons a day. Where do you stop percentage-wise? So there is a 80%. Where do you hold it? Where do you decide to hold it? 80% should be the number because one thing you have to understand is when, if you get 100,000 so gallons per day, we're, 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 we're way out of whack then. We're beyond the 80. We're, yes, yeah. we are. Yeah. And so the DDP says if you show 80% of capacity three consecutive months, then you need to tell us how you're going to get rid of that problem. Now, we've never done that. We, I can show you our running totals. And our running totals without the commitment, that's why we had the commitments in. Yeah. But our running totals are pretty much a little over a million gallons per day right now. Then we add all the commitments in, and that gets us to, to close to actual um, uh, uh, capacity. And so that's I'm just curious, you meter it on both ends in and out? Uh, yes, absolutely. I think we're going to get ourselves in trouble if we don't do something. I, I, we, in a, I, I honestly feel that Let way. Let me say this, uh, to keep us out of trouble, there's two factors you can't forget, is that we had the 156 originally, we're not going to be on the 156. So we're not in trouble because we haven't gone beyond the 156, we haven't. The 80%, and I'm going to be very, very clear and blunt, is that the, the 80%, because the DEP makes us designed by Title V rules and regulations, which is 30 to 40% greater than actual sewer use. So we're covered, we're buffered. And once we get to that number with the 156, we stop. And then we reevaluate, we look at numbers, we take the capacity from years, and we move them forward and say, okay, where are we really? So that's what we're in the process of doing. And, and when I say that Title five rules, we stick by it. We have developers that come back to us and say, yeah, but we know the number of engineers, so the numbers are less. And I say, yeah, so what? We designed by Title five. that's your number. 
Yes, it may be 30% less, but that's your number because I need a buffer. I cannot commit to more than I can actually process. And that buffer is something that I'll always keep in place because it keeps us out of trouble. <coughs> to answer your question, we have a buffer. I, well, we have a buffer and we also have a major problem, like I said, with the garden homes. And, and I'm sure that the others here are major problems too. I mean, the Agawam Beach, there's only a few people that that was going to work. Yeah, so that's why we stopped. That's not a big deal. But you look at uh, Gateway Shores, there's failed septic systems right on Oh, the I know. The, the, you can't get building permits over there because and, until the it's, sewage gets in. I know people a, that are holding on to lots and paying taxes, and they can't build on them because there's no a, sewage. It's, it's a tough area. I mean, it's polluting like crazy. And it it's, is. It's sad as we're trying to clean up the Agawam. We do one side completely, <clears> and the other side's contributing. So it's, yeah. it's like, what are you gaining? You got everything coming to the Agawam. The Agawam is a, is, is a identified uh, river of, of impairment, and we're trying to fix it, but the other side is feeding into it. So we really have to go over there and start to be to the Agawam, start tacking it. Yes. So that's why this new analysis, as you say, the comprehensive plan will give us direction. If we do get I and I, we have gals commit. We know we have to commit them. And that's the concept of the modified comprehensive wastewater management plan. Where are we going to go? Limited gallons, where do you put them? Not just anywhere. Middleborough? Depends on how much they're going to pay. Okay. Everybody, anything else on this? Okay, we've got. Uh, so, Mr. Chair, we're going to move yes. forward on this. I'll still continue the study on this. Yep. Okay. okay. Definitely. Uh, we have an agreement for Ripe Pierce. Uh, Mr. Chairman, we have a contract in place with Ripe Pierce to do <laughs> inspection of the Force Main. Well, we're going to use the technology that was the snake inside. When we did, they estimated $250,000. We went to town meeting and got $250,000. When they came back at us, there was pits to build and transitions, so that two hundred fifty inflated to $400,000, which is way out of budget. So I asked Wright and Pierce, well, we can't do that. Let's have something else. So this is their proposal. What we're going to do is we're going to go every 500 feet down that line. We're going to excavate, take the soils, and, that, and analyze the soils for corrosion. And then we're going to come back, and those particular areas are going to dig around the pipe, put uh, electromagnetics around it, and send uh, energy to it and see what the condition is. And we'll do that four places in the pipe. We'll also identify four spots in the pipe. We'll cut into the pipe pull out a coupon and analyze it. And all this, all this is to find out what condition is that pipe in. And the theory here is, and it's just a theory, that that pipe and the pipe from uh, Heinz Field were put in the same time. We're thinking whatever we find that pipe in, it's pretty frugal. I would believe- a good that assumption we, that they're gonna be the same. Yeah, we think that. I know there's different soils and there's yeah, different well, conditions, but we're thinking that if we identify here, then we can safely I mean, say. I mean, we can overthink this thing. Yeah, I know. So we're saying that's what we got here. So if we have to repair this, then we can bother repair that. If this is good, then that should be good. And that's the goal. And so this comes in at $193,000, which is within our $250,000 budget. So we think we should move forward with this. I sent the contract over to our attorney, and it needs his approval, but again, it still needs your approval to move forward. The $250,000 is in the bank, it's allocated through town meeting. It's all within these numbers. There's just another approach that's affordable to us to get where we need to get to identify. So in other words, what you're, what you're saying is we're going to save, save 50 grand going with this. You're going to save more than 50 grand. Yeah, but ballpark. Yes. 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 And get where we need to go. If they do the first dig at 500 feet and find out that the pipe needs to be lined, is there any need to do the rest? It's a good question. So we do them one at a time. If we did the first dig and we said, oh my goodness, um, the soil's really corrosive. We do the, oh my goodness, it's really corrosive. Then why would we continue on? Then you just take the contracts that we stop here and then we go back and we line the whole thing. Then we, we identify the pipe is in trouble and say this pipe is in trouble. We got to replace it, fix it or whatever. So we'll go in there and we'll grout it out and, and, and line it. Absolutely. If, if we find this good, then we, we say, no, okay, we'll keep moving on. And we may find that this is bad, but this is good. And then, and then again, it would be wise to line the whole thing because it's all soil. There's, there's a lot of variables. But 
we feel that without doing anything, I'd, I'd almost like to line it because it's been there so long. <laughs> but this would be the last thing. Are we going to have to line it under the 100 year flood plan, anyways, once we redo the pump station? No, it's under it's under it's under it's on the ground, so it, it doesn't come into the hundred hundred year flood. The hundred year flood comes about buildings above. The building codes just they changed don't, again. They don't figure for any erosion. No, the pipes down. I mean, gosh, they don't. They figure water comes in and goes up. They don't think it when it comes back out. They don't it think it takes half the soil go, with it. Yeah, it doesn't think it's going to go down six feet. That's so. That's not the yeah. If you're on the beach, there you know there's erosion, but I because I, you you have to really <coughs> mine it out. <coughs> to lose the pipe. So if, if the tide came in and went back out, they'd have to take out mine and which means it's taken out Parkwood. Oh, it, it's a lot that it's taken out. Which I'm not saying is impossible. I'm just saying that they don't, right now, the EPA and, and the uh, FEMA do not. What is the, <laughs> what is the age of this pipe? <coughs> Back in the 1971. Yeah. So it's still. <coughs> young. Younger than me. I've got 48 years. 46 years. Well, with that, with that piece of knowledge going forward, what is the life expectancy of one of these pipes? Engineer will tell you 50 years. So we're at the tail end of the life expectancy we're there. already. So. I guess my question is, is it worth the time and expense to study it. and trouble to study it <laughs> rather than just relining it? I, I suppose, again, that was the question. If you say, if something comes to his life expectancy, I have pumps that are beyond their life expectancy and are working and we keep them. You know what I mean? Well, you I understand. Look at narrow's pump station, narrow's pump stations, the entire pump station is beyond its life expectancy. Yeah, but that's a, that's a secondary argument altogether because the pump station is up here. You know, everything's down, remember, it goes down below the ground 30 feet. So everything down below is corroded, the concrete, the, the pipes, the, yeah, it's all so. I, but it's it, all accessible. Yeah, it is. It is. This isn't. It's another whole animal. You know you're going to end up having to line it anyway. Well, that's no, it. If you're going to have to line it anyway. I, I'm not disagreeing. If, if you know, we go by life expectancy, then I mean, it would seem to, it would to me, it, just, you know, we're, be, we're concerned about what could happen in a hundred year flood, which we're never going to get what they're predicting, that they're, they're kind of off the charts. It's Saturday. Huh? Going to get to Saturday. Oh, Saturday is coming? I'm sorry, I missed that. Year? Yeah, I missed that. I didn't get the memo. We've never had a hundred year. I know. The hurricanes we've had, I think the best was 70 year, which was, I think 1953 was a 32 or 38. 70 year, I think it was 54, was the, was the summer 30, year. 38, 38 was the, was the, was the worst. Year. I don't know. It was the worst one. It was the, the highest level of flooding in, in a town. Yeah. They did by the 38, 38 was deeper than. Uh, I think you saw the presentation when they did. Uh, uh, I, I was, I saw the, sh the, at the gas station where they had it on the window. No, no. What I meant is the presentation is what the, what the government declined fifty. Did they make the determination? I know because they don't know what they're doing. But, but yeah. But anyways, it's it's but not. They've got all the marbles. It's far from the hundred year flood. We've never seen one. Yeah, no. We've never so, seen one. Mr. Chairman, yes. I, I just to expedite things a little bit long. I, I, I agree with you 100%. We haven't gotten any good news about the pipes that were put in in the 70s. There's no need to, I, I don't think you're gonna get good so news. Wanna, I think we're gonna. So do you wanna just play, fix it, replace it? Have, you, have, you, have you had any failures yet? I would yeah. rather. No, we don't, we have no failures because nothing's manifested to the surface. So it may be leaching that we're not aware of. Could be. But nothing's mm -hmm. coming to the surface. And right now, the only determination would be what comes to the surface. I don't want to get into Plymouth situations. I don't either. That's why I wanted to look at it. But if you think we just replace it, we can replace it. Then that would mean replace that, then replace um, uh, Heinz Field, because that's the same age. And so we just replace everything that's in that age group. Can we get a number on that? I, I, deal I, with? Can, I can try. I get yeah. the total footage. And, Get a number on it all. Yeah. Let's see which way we go. Now, what, because that, uh, what's the status of the pipe that was going to be lined from the pipe station back up to the high school and so forth? All the way up to Swiss Beach. We're, mm -hmm. we're, we're working on that. I've got some things over the winter. Well, it there. would be silly for us to do that if we don't do this. Because it's got to flow right through it. So, 
I mean, if we bring it down as far as the narrow pump station and we've fixed everything from Swift Beach to the narrowest pump station, mm -hmm. it would be silly not to go ahead and line the rest of the way. One's a pressurized ductile line pump pipe that is constantly in water in theory, which means that the only way it's going to oxidize and crown out is if there's air pockets. We don't know, and that's what the test will tell us. The other one is a gravity pipe that's only designed to flow in the invert. With any type of uh, turbulence, you release H2S, which is absorbed by the bacteria, and they give off acid, sulfuric acid, and that's what eats the pipe. So one is in front that is very susceptible to deterioration. Force main is not that they're not susceptible to deterioration. However, there's conditions that can exp expedite that. Plymouth had a situation where the top of their crown was full of air constantly because of the elevation change and the right. failures of the venting. Mm -hmm. So they had, a, and that pipe went in 10 years, which is unheard of because they had extenuating circumstances because of elevation changes and um, the, the non-working vent and the corrosion uh, program. So that's a force main. It should never have happened. They, I mean, in theory, they go 40, 50 years. So what I'm saying is that we should fix this pipe here. And if you want this pipe fixed, we'll fix it. Um, because this is not going to change the flow coming to that station presently. It's just going to eliminate infiltration, which actually may decrease the flow, and exfiltration, which is polluting of the bay. So that pipe, to me, at this particular time, without any other knowledge, becomes a higher priority. I can make an assumption and say that force main is leaking. I don't know, but it may not be leaking. This pipe we know for a fact is leaking, and it's causing us a lot of harm. So we'll fix this pipe, and that's about a nine to $11 million fix. And so we're looking to do that. We were going to look at the force main and spend 130, uh, tw almost $200,000 to see what the condition was to see where that should become on our priority list. But if you're saying don't waste that time and just replace it anyways, then we can do it in conjunction or right after. The board can decide mm -hmm. and I'll do it any way you want me to do it. Do you have a ballpark on what it will cost to line that? 8,000 feet? I have no idea. Because it's a different material, it's a yeah. different grinding, it's a different process, I have no idea. This I knew because I asked the question. I will ask the question. And on that one, we'll have to build a bypass. Either one, no matter what you do, because while you're doing a pipe, you can't flow through it, right. so you got to bypass. You gotta bypass everything, everything you do, you got to bypass. And that's a cost. And some, some, that cost, and that bypass would go from the narrows directly to the plant. I may be able to go down Route 6 and put a pipe on the side of the road and go under everybody's driveway and just continue to do that. There's, there's options, but that all has to be priced out also. And there are people that do that, so we'd ask them what they give us an estimate, what it would cost to do that. <coughs> they, they talk to different uh, uh, lining companies to get the cost, the estimate, what it would cost to grind out and do a force main ductile line, 12 inches, 18 inches. And then we'll take those numbers and say, okay, here's where they are, as we did with these numbers over here. Hey, Jerry, let me throw out of the what if. If we do the uh, inspection, and they go through the inspection of the of the pipe and find out that it's in reasonable shape because it's not going to be 100 percent there's no question there right. what becomes your position then on relining it at what point so and would you I, I don't know when I would do it, but it'd go on my list. So what I would ask the, the scientists that do the analysis is the thickness of that pipe. And what they would determine is where it is now, how much, how long it took to get to this point. And then there's factors that once it's exposed, that it may be a quicker process and get an estimate as to what the life expectancy would have left. And then from there, I'd make a decision. If they say, well, that, that pipe's got another 10 years in it, well, then it's okay. And then I would look to put this, it'd go on my list of priorities, but it wouldn't be the highest. We don't have any um, So that's what I would look at I, to make a decision. Because right now, I couldn't, I couldn't tell you. But I would, the scientists would give me an idea of the shape of that pipe, the thickness of the pipe, and how quick it's deteriorated to this point. We can make some guess on how long it would go. But the bottom line is, at a point in time, that pipe is going to have to be relined. I would suggest or replaced. That. I would suggest that. Right, nothing forever. Okay, so with it, where it's been in there for 46 years now, you know, it's somewhat unlikely to expect it's going to last another 46. I think that's fair. 
Now we could probably go another 10 without us even looking at it. Uh, but at the same time, it won't be any cheaper to do the job relining it 10 years from now than it will be today. That's not. And then again, we don't know. Technology, I know the technology yep. I'm seeing now, it's, it's going to cut the cost. So it may be cheaper because of technology once we start doing it more. I don't know. But my position is, is I don't know the condition of the pipe, and I'm not comfortable with that because it's proximity no. to the river. Yeah. I'd like to know the condition of that pipe. If well, we're going to fix it, let's fix it. If not, we should see what the condition is. I mean, I, th I think that's, uh, that's the case, and I'm, you know, it's kind of... And I, I'm not going to hear a question right now, at least with me. I mean, do you, you know, I'd say you know, if we could afford it, we just line the damn thing, do the whole thing in one, one shot, get it done, it's out of the way, put it to bed, and we don't have to worry about it. Uh, you know, the flip side is, you know, uh, we might have other areas that are in worse shape that yeah, we have to that we take have. care of. So we're, we're between a rock and a hard place right now. So I think we, we have to do it. Well, can we take some coupons here and there? We are. We're going to take four coupons. So is that four. the least expensive? Yes. So what we'll do is Method. the least expensive is the corrosion. I, su I suggest we do a few of those. Maybe they can. Yeah. Do they know the profile of the pipe as it's installed? Maybe they, they could go to some high. You pick a couple of high points where you think there might be air pockets. Worst case. We can we can do that. And, and how, so how far down is a guy? How far down? Yeah. It's about seven to eight feet down. Yeah. And so what they did is a profile because very important because there's some. Did they have that plotted for you so yes, you can actually the, look at it. So you can go. Okay, I want to test here, here, and here. We definitely can. We, we can see what I'm saying, Jimmy, is reduce the scope of the testing. Oh, I understand. That makes, well, that makes a lot of sense. Right. That but they were going to do four anyways. We're going to do four. But before so. we do the four, we're going to do every 500 feet, we're going to dig and get the conductivity or the corrosion to give us direction of where to put the coupons. Because as you, as you did this type, but they're, they're, I know, five by ten or whatever, you dig it up and you go along, you take the soil and they analyze it. And they say, okay, this is corrosive. So that's a good spot, and we're going to do that, and then make the decision where you do the four coupons and where you do the four magnetics over that whole span of the pipe. Or we can just do the profile and say, well, we suggest this is a spot. We can pick, we can hand pick them and eliminate the 500, uh, every 500 feet. We can do that. I, I'm, I'm leaning towards picking the four worst spots. I'm, I'm with you. Pick the four See if we can reduce the scope. I'm with, I'm with you. We, we do that Unless because... Unless an engineer tells me you're wasting your time, which he may. Engineers have a different way of looking at things. The this particular engineering firm suggests we did the 500 to get the four best, because every 500 feet to get the four best, because the corrosion study would give us that information. And they feel if we're going to drill into that pipe, if we're going to do magnetic, we need to know by corrosionists around that pipe what the best four spots are likely going to be the best representation of what the condition of that pipe is. That's why they put it in there. I asked for coupons. Just couple coupons. They says, well, this now with the corrosive test, it gives you the best locations to do the coupons. So that's if why you're doing there. every 500 feet every, with yeah. the conductivity, do you have to dig down the pipe every 500 feet? Or well, do you they, they, bore they, down to it? Can you bore down to it? Or? They may. We can look at that. That, that may be an alternative. They thought it was easy to dig, but boring, because I don't know the cost of a boring machine. We can put that in, we can, we can find out by quoting that. What would cost us to bore down, I'm take just, that soils and send it over? Yeah, I'm just thinking least evasive and... That's a good, you know, we can definitely look into that. You start That's, digging eight foot holes and... Well, I, I, it's not so much solar I don't, it's the water table that I worry about because... I know where they're water. coming from, I just didn't know if you could reduce the scope, That's all. The question I can ask is, in, in, in A, is can we, can we get rid of the 500? And they've already told me no, but I'll revisit that. But the more importantly, can we bore instead of escalate? Yeah. Well, you know, tell them what we're looking at is the age of the pipe. Yep. And just, like, you know, I know what you're thinking, Jim. Why spend yeah. $200,000 yeah. when I mean, you're going to have to do it into anyway. The, into the but I'd like some level of comfort to, yeah. I would like to know the condition of the pipe without selling the farm. If we, line, if we decide to line that pipe, then we're lining onto it because they're the same age. If we did a test and thought of the condition of that, then we can make assumptions onto it. If we can buy some time because we've got gravity that's in trouble, then we can, because to be very blunt, we can do it all, do every one of them, do it all, but I don't think the ratepayers can absorb that. I mean, right. just doing part of it's going to be quite an absorption to them because they have to pay for it, right? We pay for it, they pay for it. That means it's going to be in their rates. So the question becomes is how much do we want to spend on an annual basis? Because we can bond it all. 
So we, we can identify every pipe over 40 years old and say, let's fix it. Straightforward, throughout the town. And and we're gonna end up doing that eventually. Anyway. Well, eventually, but Probably. if it looks we like we could get eight or 10 years out of it, then we know we exactly. have to do that other one first. Right, so we and can set a priority. With no conscience, That's and then right. we go to the, uh, the next one. Yep. Mm -hmm. That's right, and then you can yeah, keep this, your, your but the, uh, To me, the, this particular one. I'm is, trying to. Is, is, no, I understand, I'm with you. Look, I mean, I'm, what I'm looking at is that particular one seems to be the main yep. pipe for the town. Well, I'm certainly not suggesting we ignore but, uh, it. So. Uh, pressure one that we're talking about right now. Yeah, the narrow. Uh, you, you, yeah. That's one of them. So Narrows uh -huh. is one, Hines is one, and Depot is one. Those are our three main pump stations that come to the plant. So we thought if we got one, we could see them all. Because but your vol but your vo the main volume comes through Hines. I mean, it comes through Narrows, doesn't it? 300,000 gallons time? roughly a day comes through Narrows. 300,000 in the summer, probably 220 in the winter, comes from the onset side because we got all of onset which encompasses the golf course and everything that way from Monset back. And then the other depot takes the other side of town, Indian Mile Beach, 6 and 28, and back. So there's three separate areas. And we can make the argument that Narrows, and I think it's slightly, I think Narrows pump does 14 gallons per minute, and I think, I think uh, Hines does about 12 or 11 something per minute, and I think um, Depot does about 110. So they're all relatively yeah. close. Well, I guess what I'm concerned, what Hines is my concern more. about it, concern. Hines is more residential. Now, are both ends of that metered guy? So you could tell if you had issues? No, the, the, we don't have meters. We have, pump, we have pumps time. And so what you do is you do flow <laughs> tests of the pump. You do drawdowns and you do it every quarter. <coughs> PM of that pump, gallons per minute, what it pumps for gallons. And then you check it with the, the, the the, the run time, and then you make the decision. We, I would like to, in every every pump station we have, I'd like to do flow charts. That was the old technology. For some reason, they feel we don't need them. We can get numbers, yeah. you yeah. know, flow. So, but flow, for me, flow meters are the absolute best, because you know. That's why with Great Hill, we mandated a flow meter. It's not guess what you're going to put it. We want right, to see exactly right. what's yeah. coming at us. And I eventually would like to put flow meters in every one of our main pump yep. stations for real hard numbers. It's kind of an easy way to monitor what... Yeah. I don't know why we got away from them. I say the reason that, I guess the reason I, I'm more concerned about Narrows Pump Station is because that takes care of the hospital. Absolutely, it's it's one of us. That's, that's the primary. You mentioned vents. Are there vents on that? Just one. Just one. one. It's, school. it's functioning. It's not functioning. So I believe when, so. We, part of me, a long time ago, I about three years ago, yeah, yeah, just replaced all air vents in the entire town. And that got to be a project. So I'm going to, in this project, I'm in the scope because we put a contingency of 30000 I want to see the cost of replacing it. It makes no sense to do anything with replacing that air vent. Is it the actual vent guy, or is it where it's tapped into the line? That's, the you don't know vent. what the... Well, well what we see physically is the vent rotted. It's rotted away, so it, the, the mechanism internal is not working. I don't know if it goes... So we thought about rebuilding it, but there's not enough there to rebuild. Yeah. So you just unbolt it, take it out, put another one in. And that can be done, you can temporarily shut the pump station down, put a pump truck there, and then make that disconnect connect and have it because there's no, just whether I do anything at all, as far as uh, in, whether I do one coupon, 20 coupons, or I still need to replace that. It makes no sense yeah, I understand. without replacing that. And that'll give me a visualization of the highest point where the air is likely to be. That's another point of, okay, uh, an evaluation and assessment. Yeah. Guy, with, uh, from, Going back to the Narrows pump station for a second, does Wareham's Crossing get fed down through there? Wareham Crossing comes into Narrows. That's what I thought. Now, where does that where does that feed down? Does that come down Main Street? No, it feeds down. It does eventually. Yes, you're right because it does. It feeds down Tony Road to Springbourne Pump Station. Okay, it's Force Main up to the just up over the railroad there. bridge. There's a right. there's a manhole there. Then yeah. gravity's down into okay. Main Street and down behind Merchant's Way and into the facility. Gotcha. Yeah. See that, I mean, that's why you're, you're, you're not talking about residential with the other two as much. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're talking about with Hines. Hines is residential, but it's still, a, you know, we've got the hospital to be concerned with. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, it's all part of analysis. When you do and consequences that's, and, that's and also consequences and all, you say, okay, what if this goes down? What's the consequences? And that also and takes care of so uh, the, yeah, the hospital, the, 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 the doctor's offices, the 
Well, then again, there. again, if they want to do some, it's all through there. Yeah, if they want to do other it testing, does. maybe they can identify critical areas, mm. areas that they feel would be more likely to fail. They have to know. They have an idea, and that's why they have to know. I, I, this I, is what they do. Sometimes I get a little con con concerned about engineers. The they want to protect. Them. Here's the thing. So they say that's the spot that we dig in. They say that's great, and the pipe fails. I'm coming after that. Ties, it goes over so the they got to protect themselves. So they say, listen, no. every 500 feet, you better check because the, uh, we're asking them to make a decision, and they become responsible for that decision. Water department. And they don't want that liability. They, not on it. they would say to me, "Can you pick?" The I don't ones. believe the water department. And then it's my liability. Sure. And I'm going to sure. say to them, "I'm not the I'm expert." Not okay. And they're going to say exactly. So every 500 feet, we'll dig. We'll do the conductivity. We'll do the corrosion, and then we'll pick out for the coupons, and then we'll pick out for the lecture, and then we'll get the best. And then everybody is. Off the hook per se. No, we're not. We're not really asking for their approval. No, we, ju not. we just want the test results and an analysis. And, 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 so. and if, you, if you read language in the contract, it's all about responsibility, liability, and so they're nervous if they tell us what to do and it fails, then it's on them. Because I'm coming after them. Yeah. So we've decided we're going to see if we can narrow the scope of this. You're going to have a discussion, right? I'm going to talk to, to uh, Larry and to write to us in the morning. And, and, and basically, it's, it's, it's not about the price. It's about the fact that we may have to replace or line the thing anyhow. They need to understand that. So and what that, are we doing here? They right? do, and that's why they're trying to figure out what the condition is to help us right, make the decision. Right. Now, in this scope, it's up to the 198. If we believe we do one test and one, as we said earlier, we, we find that to be totally, this pipe is in trouble, then why go forward? Okay. And so that, that That's a good option, too, areas. if they'll go along with that. Yeah. Yeah. Because this, well, because well, of the project, we? doesn't mean that everything in here we have to absolutely do. Yeah. This is the scope of work. We have the right to modify that. Okay. And say, listen, do one and that's it. No. And then that's good. We, we then you've already thought about it. Time. Yeah. Literally. I just want to be frank with you. I just want to know where I am so it just adds to my sleep at night. It's just yep. not a good feeling not knowing the condition of that pipe. Especially, you know, knowing people in Plymouth and seeing what that community's gone through. I'm not saying, our pipe is in nowhere near the elevation changes that they have. That yeah. was an abnormal, a series of elevation changes. Yeah. Yeah. We're not in that category, but nonetheless, I just want to know. Yep. Okay, what do we want to do with this contract? Do we want to just... Uh, well, let's just put it on hold until the guy talks to them and we can we come back and talk about it. <laughs> Let them rewrite it. That's a motion, anybody? How do you want to say it? Just postpone to anything. Just postpone until the next meeting. You just say we're postponing next meeting. And That's all. all. Yeah. Okay. You don't have to say anything. You yeah. can just say just postpone it until next meeting. It's going to move forward. Yeah. You're looking for more information. Yeah. Is that agreeable with everybody? Yes. That's yeah. with me. Okay. Yeah. There we go. Now we've got a, a second quarter billing for born usage fee. Hundred and six thousand nine hundred and fifty six dollars and twenty cents. Make a motion we accept it as written. Yep. A second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Four oh. Guy, do you have the original for signing or did you give it to I Don? Do okay, yeah. fine. Just so I before I mark this up. Right? Before I mark it up. I have the original one here. I didn't okay. check it all the time. I'm trying to make sure. Okay. Our next meeting is the 14th of December. Mm -hmm. uh, gosh, 14th of December. Yeah. Donna? Yes, sir. I make a motion for adjournment. I oh. second. <laughs> <laughs> All in favor? I was slow today. Aye. 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 I was slow. I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> I'm still thinking about that study. 
<laughs> Which one? <laughs> this is for Donna only. This is, I guess, Oh, yeah, minutes. the minutes right here. This is for Peter only, so that must be minutes. And this is for Jim, Malcolm, and Peter. This was back to original November 3rd, 2016. To check the policy involved the contracts to be signed by the board. This was never endorsed. Oh, okay. So it's, yeah. it's, it's, no one has a record of it. It was never done, so now it makes it official. Okay. Here we go. That's for the policy. Oh, policy 487? No, that was the other policy. Policy from last year. Oh. Last year's policy. Anybody uh, talk to Sue? See how she's doing? Any better? Or? Nobody's heard anything. That's the third thing. There's not a zero zip. Okay. I guess when they made this decision, you weren't here. Okay. So that's the one they had to sign it. This is contract policy 24, which states that all contracts must be approved by the board before they move forward. Okay. Yeah. He's coming tomorrow? Yes. Supposed to rain in the morning or what? I don't know. I thought it was going to rain today. How late? Good morning or so. Sometime early morning to mid morning. It talks about commute being crazy. That's all I've heard. So. Well, I'll have to get out early then if I want to avoid the commuting traffic. Well, yeah. I mean, that traffic from my house over to the sewer plant to sign the bills. Yeah. So I, I could get caught. So you ever said you guys. Is <laughs> rebuilt the board? Board's already got the permit for the commuter rail? Interesting. What? Horn has applied for and got that permit for the commuter rail. The commuter rail is one of those things that nobody talks about. Uh, and Horn has been approved, so they're redoing the station now. Yeah. It's funny, they're talking about before. So this will be a stop guy on the way yeah. through? Re regardless of. should if get a stop yeah. because the criteria, we probably use a pocket became an issue with this stop. Yeah. They worked it off a little park and they did, did their center by it, so they redid it. So I think they're saying by. Uh, fall of 218. They said this closed practically anyway. So they, get, they get plenty of parking down there. They said this closed. They got already set front of the yeah. parking. The they got a ton of parking. Right now, it's, there's nothing there to use it for the um, dinner trays. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. And it has the commuter in the summer. Yeah. The board is on the list, actually.